and they're over there, so help yourself. Is it okay? To yeah. Okay. Take them before you go in. Mm -hmm. No, it's all marked up. We just have two short prayers in the front. And I'm going to ask you to take your places, and then the pastoral candle will come down the middle, and then Kathleen and I will help you light your candle from the pastoral candle. Okay? So we'll take our light and give it to the people on the end of the row, and then you just pass it around. Okay? You have a bullet hand candle for us? Yes, I do. what's in there for people who don't know? What's in the fire pit? What's in the fire pit? Oh, thank you. I, Deacon, I, I haven't explained what we have here. Uh, you'll notice the white cloths. These are old altar linen that we can no longer use. So in order to uh, dispose of them in a respectful manner, we are burning them. Also, there is oil, for, uh, prismatic and also for uh, um, yeah. oil that we use for anointing. Uh, for sickness, for anointing. And that old oil is put on here as well. So that's why it doesn't look like a normal fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Savior Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing the word and celebrating the sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Take your seats.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, Bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light. Resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice, to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the Feast of the Pentecost paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and now victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, to your mercy and loving kindness to us 
that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How blessed is this night, where earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice and offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continuously to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star, who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. 
God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself 
to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Israel's Deliverance at the Red Sea, a reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before the sea, before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had fallen that followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, 
Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Hear what the Lord is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from the slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of, of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered, covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath 
and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Zephaniah, the gathering of God's people. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult you over with loud singing as on a day of festival. He will remove disaster from you so that you will no, not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you affirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? 
And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Glory to God in the highest and peace to the Lord God and the King, Almighty God and Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of, God, of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of the life. For if we have been united with, with him in his death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For, whenever, for whoever has died is free from sin. But we, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will be also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin 
and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Christ. Praise you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. Amen. If I had to pick just one church service to attend out of the entire year, it would be this one, Easter Vigil. In one way, it's all of the other services for the entire year rolled into one. The beginning of this service starts out in darkness, that is fitting, for in the Jewish calendar, a day starts at sundown of the previous day, not at midnight. Earlier, we were at the entrance of the church waiting for something to happen. And indeed, it did. A flame started burning, and we lit the Paschal candle. We rejoiced that the light has come into the midst of our darkness, just as we rejoiced with the angels and the shepherds during Christmas. Next, we heard the entire history of our relationship to God, starting with the creation of the universe and humanity. God's salvation of the people of Israel was in the story of Moses, in the passing through the Red Sea. Ezekiel and Zephaniah told us to expect a time when we would be, when we would have a new spirit in the, in the gathering of God's people. And indeed, the Holy Spirit is what appeared to the disciples at Pentecost. We then took our own place within this salvation history by reciting our baptismal vows. We made promises that we will do our best to follow God in all things and resist any temptations that might take us away from God. Now, we're ready to start the first Easter celebration with Holy Eucharist. We will say a word that we have not heard for the past six weeks, namely, Alleluia, which means praise ye the Lord. The Gospel reading that is given for us in year B is from Mark, and it is perhaps the most difficult. Many scholars believe that this gospel was the first to be written out of all four, about 40 years after the death of Jesus. It's difficult because of the ending. The women disciples gathered at the tomb where Jesus was buried to anoint his body. They did not see Jesus, only an empty tomb. Someone dressed in white told them that Jesus had been raised and to tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus was going to see them just as he had promised. The end of our reading, though, says that the women did not tell anyone about their experience because they were afraid. Now, Deacon Nancy messed me up when she read the gospel. Because the part that she added at the end after they were afraid is considered a supplementary uh, ending. The lesson, as originally written, said that the women were afraid, period. No post-resurrection encounters, no realization by the women of what what really had happened and changing their fear into joy. None of what we would expect for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Just fear. On Friday, March 22nd, we had a memorial service for Chris Timmons here. During the homily, I urged the people gathered to explore the feelings that might have been popping up concerning death, whether that of themselves or their loved ones. Christian funerals are important, I believe, for it is there that we are reminded of the good news that we read about in the gospel reading in a very tangible way. Jesus died for all of us so that death would not have the last word. Because of Jesus, we have been promised eternal life in the company of God. I don't know what my death will be like. I fear that I might suffer pain or won't be able to think clearly. But I don't know what will happen. My fear is because of what is unknown. Sometimes I'm afraid that I might develop a disease that will last a long time. I do not want my loved ones to suffer along with me or feel compelled to spend a lot of money in my last days. The thing that alleviates my fear and doubt is about my own death is the promise of eternal life with God. 
I suspect that the fear of the unknown is the same thing that the women at the tomb experienced. What Deacon Nancy read was the shorter ending. This is appended on to the, uh, the originally written version of our gospel. And the reason is very good why they did that. Because they didn't want to leave the end of the gospel with the women were afraid. This was called the shorter ending, and it follows directly after the last sentence of the gospel reading we had. And I'll repeat it just so you can uh, recall. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The second ending, called, you guessed it, the longer ending, has Jesus appearing to various people, including Mary Magdalene, then two disciples, then the remaining 11 disciples. No one believed Mary or the two disciples when they told the others what had happened. Only after Jesus appeared to the eleven did they believe. Jesus told them to go out into the world and preach the good news. It's important to recognize what the writers of these two endings felt, and that was something was missing from the original. And that is, the good news must be shared with others in order to be good news. This is why we're here tonight, and why we'll be here tomorrow morning. We are continuing the story of our salvation of all humanity through the telling of the good news. Our job now is to go outside of the church and tell others about it. We do not have to be fearful any longer. This really is good news worth sharing. Amen. In the radiant splendor of this most holy night, let us cry out to the Lord, whose mighty deeds we have seen in the deliverance of God's people through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we, God's holy church, proclaim the resurrection, saying, Christ is risen. Amen. Alleluia. For the people of God brought through saving waters to a land of promise, may our lives be a song of joy to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. May we proclaim, Christ is risen. risen. Amen. 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 Alleluia. For all the humankind created in the image and likeness of God, May God place a new heart and a new spirit within all people. May our lives proclaim Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the Anglican cycle, we pray for the Church of the province of West Indies. In our diocese, Christ has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. In the military cycle of prayer, we, pe- we pray for the U.S. Navy chief in their um, 131 birthday. May we proclaim, Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For Michael and, and presiding bishop Susan, our bishop, Kirby, our priest, Nancy, our deacons, and all priests and other ministries and all the people of this congregation who minister in the Christ names may be proclaimed. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
liberated from sin and death by water and spirit. We pray for those who do not share our hope that they may proclaim. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Joining with those who share in the passion of Christ through illness, fame, water, uh, war, temptation, and trial, we pray for their courage and strength that those who suffer may proclaim. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, other intercessions may be offered. We proclaim. Christ, Christ is risen. Is risen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. United in our hope that we and all who die will live again, we pray for families and friends who have died, Especially proclaiming, Christ is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. O true God, who has glorified your Son, Jesus Christ, as the pledge of our freedom from sin and death, Receive our praise and prayer through Christ our Lord, the great Amen, and our Alleluia, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give up thanks and praise. It, it, it is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance, countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We proclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the church, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. 
when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to them, thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be your holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. David and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, keep you in your joy. The body of Christ, keep you in your joy. Blood of Christ, give me joy. The blood of Christ, give me joy. Oh. The blood of Christ, give me joy. The blood of 
body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen.
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. to Christ, who is gloriously risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise.